Hello, everyone. I'm G Virus, and uh, here with Dagger and Mondo Mantra. How are you doing today? Well, I'm doing pretty good. Dagger, how are you doing, sir? I'm trying to get this RTMP thing to work, <laughs> but uh, <pretty> good. <laughs> dude, come on, man. My bad. I thought you were ready to go. I, I should have waited for your go on the uh, VLC situation. Hey, man, um, I can work with a delay. I have a camera, but I don't know. I just decided not to turn it on. I, I don't want to distract people with my dashing looks, so. <laughs> All right. Well, right now, we're, you're, you're going to be doing Leon A Standard, Resident Evil 2 Remake, which is a pretty dashing game, if I say so myself. Mm -hmm. They're going to be looking for the G-Virus while well, I'm here. And uh, with that being said, I mean, I'm ready to start the timer on your mark. Well, the timer starts when I select the difficulty, so it starts... Should I do three, two, one? Yep. Three, two, one, go. All right. All right, so this is the gas station. Which is probably the most uh, uninteresting part of the run. <laughs> it's supposed to be like the tutorial area, but in the in-game settings we turn off the tutorials because they lose about two minutes. The funny thing is when I first started running this game, I actually kept them on by accident. So I was losing three minutes by accident every run and then I was like, what? Like, I can't believe I was behind everyone for something so silly. So. Yeah. And that was the gas station, pretty much, pretty straightforward. You shoot him, go through, and it's over. Attention, all citizens. There are, there's a very small, uh, dagger. Do you know, you know, shift boots are right, dagger? How they work? By the way, dagger, were you able to get the feet to work? Uh, not yet. I'm working on it right now. Oh, Don't worry about dead. it. I got, I got me. But uh, no, I don't really know about shift boost. So I think that came after my time. Okay, so shift boost are very minor time save. Kind of like uh, anyone familiar with GoldenEye speedrunning, where they use the two point whatever uh, control scheme, where you start running during like cutscenes. What you do in this game is you'll press shift at a strategic time and you save about 0.1 to 0.2 seconds. It depends which, like where it is in the run. Like some save more, it depends on the timing of it, but it saves, uh, like, like right there I just did one where you, you can tell if you got it because you do the run cycle really soon, otherwise like you'll just thrust forward, so if you ever see like a smooth run cycle, chances are that's probably a shift boost, and it's very, there's a ton of them throughout the run. And here, this is actually a very minor trick here, where I grab the locker, it looks pretty simple, like, oh, you just, you just time to press. Well, there's, I actually found this by accident, and everyone just decided to do it, where if you spam one action key and you hold the other, you'll insta-open the locker without having to time it. So it's a bit of a convenient trick. And this is another trick here, which was found by accident, kind of funny, where if you pause here and wait, the door bursts open instantly, saves about two seconds. Pretty nice trick. It's useful both on Claire and Leon, so that's what was right there. Right. Now that did look like it saved ten or two seconds. It looked like it wasted about. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, if we're timing an RTA, that just lost like five seconds. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Whatever. Oh, so it's IGT. Yeah, it saves IGT, which is what this game is timed in. Usually. Yeah, also, yeah, dagger 100% right. Jeez, dude. <laughs> Man, what I, I actually don't know how to do it because the timing is different. Oh, yeah, um, dagger, do you mind explaining how, like, quick turns and stair skates work? Which is, I've done a handful of them already. Uh, so, stair skating in this game is a little bit different than HD Remaster. Instead of 
furiously mashing the uh, button, you want to actually kind of tap it rhythmically. So I think he will probably tap the aim button probably around four times when he's on like the larger stairs. Is that correct? Well, these each uh, stairs just like if you could spam it, but it's better to time it. Like here, this is kind of like a rhythm of like three and then two, and then you do it again. Cause the second part, like right there, there's like three, and then you do two here. Each stairs are different. You have to remember different counts for each one, which is kind of like a meme, but that's just what you have to do. Right, and the uh, quick turn, he kind of... I'm trying to think the best way to actually put it into words, because I was never great at quick turns. I was very lazy and kind of just rounded the corner. But you just like you quickly aim and then you're hitting uh one of the lateral keys left or right and then you'll just do a 90 degree turn instead of just rounding the corner so you're taking as little movement as possible like on these stairs i have no idea how many you're supposed to do like there's kind of like a rhythm to it you get the feel of over time. Like, I kind of just try the rhythm and, you know, worst case scenario, you lose probably like, well, like 0.2 or something. Because every stair skate saves, like with Leon, it saves about, um, I don't think it saves as much as Claire's where each stair skate saves 0.3 because she has to run in caution and that is a much slower run cycle on stairs. Oh, so what, what what you just did there for the helicopter crash? What was that? Oh, <laughs> I'm so used to doing it, I don't ever think about it. Um, it's like, it's a little trick where if you usually do that, you'll be like, oh, it, I thought the helicopter was supposed to like thrust you backwards. So if you aim at the last second facing the wall, you'll bounce at the side wall, which saves about half a second or so. It's a very minor optimization, but it's pretty nice. So you're saying there's like no reason not to go for it? Yeah, I mean, it's also not very hard to do. The only problem is, is that if you wait too long, you can time it so that, um, like, you could honestly sit there for three seconds while the helicopter's crashing, but you know, no one's going to do that. You just, like, just if you, you just have to get the timing down, I guess. I don't know. Oh, yeah, and there's also, like, slightly, uh, a slight movement optimization here too usually if you try to go this on this like hug the right wall there you'll hit the zombie down and it'll fall down and it's really annoying it loses like almost a second it's like the worst thing ever but the good thing is, is you can actually go for a better line the second time but you've already lost the time so also people in chat are saying playing it safe i i am the most yolo man you'll ever meet so no way Says the man who doesn't YOLO Carlo. Okay, well, that's for a different reason, sir. Okay, aim when. That's all. <laughs> aim when. Okay, so now my uh, <laughs> ammo count is really bad because of that, so now I'm gonna have to adjust. Aim. I guess I, I thought I had good aim in this game, I guess not. That's interesting. So, yeah, we kind of want to have about three to four bullets here. It's very tight. Now I pretty much have one bullet to do everything, which is kind of... I guess we'll see how it works. Isn't there an ammo pickup somewhere in the office? What do you mean frame drops, sir? Oh, that was very unlucky, but whatever. One oh, thing kind of funny about the liquors in this game is that, like, it feels like they're AI and they're speed is extremely fast when you're not looking at them. They get extremely camera shy when you have the cameras trained on them. I'm gonna do something kind of really dumb here, but there's a backup ammo pack like just like right here. Actually, I don't have room, so I guess I'm... Uh... <laughs> well, that was just pretty much a waste of time. Uh, whatever. I thought there was ammo pack up here. Oh, there actually the, uh... is. I should have went for this one. Right as I went for that one, I realized you could just grab this one as a backup. But I have to shoot some more bullets, actually. That was a bit of a flub by me, but not a huge deal. Yeah, everything's fine. It's a nice, cozy run. 
just so long as you open that door <laughs> prior to that bomb yeah. room. So yeah, some people like might like because in my casual playthrough, I did not know you could keep this door open because the shelf would fall on it, and then you're kind of just racing against the liquor to try to open it, and the liquor will always hit you. Oh, one thing I've always been mean to ask, sometimes I see you uh, pan your camera up and you kind of like wiggle the camera a little bit around mm -hmm. liquors. Why? Okay, so in this game, it's about how you look at them, the camera. So when you look up, liquors behave differently than if you look at them head on. So what I do there is I always look up to make sure that they let you... Uh, just pass by easy and we take that line instead of the other way because it's like one second faster mm -hmm. um so yeah that was that was rpd it was kind of it went okay it said like on my timer it said 856 which is kind of it's like 14 behind record so not the best pace but you know just how it goes that that ammo and the aiming you know like we're just gonna forget that happened. <laughs> We're just gonna forget about that. That didn't happen. I have perfectly good ammo. It doesn't matter. Whatever. You've had some pretty clutch shots before in the past, so yeah. it's fine. Apparently, according to Mango, dinner's ready, I guess. You know, I had dinner about five hours ago. Yikes. <laughs> Oh yeah, Dag, do you mind explaining how the knife works? <laughs> Alright, oh, so... I guess I, I try to enjoy the con controversy that happened when the run first started. Uh, but, you can see that in the bottom right hand corner is uh, 120, that is Mondo's FPS. And so, uh, the RE engine has a lovely little feature where for each frame that the knife is inside an enemy, it's like checking for damage. And so the higher your FPS is, the more the damage up front the knife is going to do. Um, I think that's the best way to explain it. Well, people have tested some people's like I remember early on in the game because I've been running this game since it came out. Um, people theorized that, oh, if you could get 600 FPS, you could kill G1 in one knife slash, <laughs> which is actually not true because the game has diminishing returns at higher frame rates. I'm pretty sure once you hit like 240, you can't really get more damage from the knife. So, like, yeah, pretty much I would say the game probably checks every couple frames to do damage, I guess. And then, like, it's kind of like anyone familiar with RE7, it's pretty much the same quirk. Hey, like, if we did it on cap, it'd probably be crazy as well, but. Yeah, like, r 7s kind of the same in that regard with the axe. I've never personally tried to do it over 120, but the, the, does the knife actually degrade fast? So yeah, you. this is kind of like the trade-off, I guess, but when you think about it, it's pretty much just degrading at the rate of damage. So, um, your knife will degrade faster on higher frame rates, but you'll be doing higher damage. But if you're on 30 FPS, your knife will be degrading very slow, but you'll be doing very little damage. So it's kind of, I guess, that's just like a quirk of how it works. Which, I don't... Gotcha. It's just so weird to me. Like, I don't know why they just didn't make it a fixed rate. But, you know, I guess it's great because it makes the bosses really easy, so... Well, if your DA is where it should be. Uh, Dagger, do you want to talk about DA? <laughs> I know, that great works. segue there, right? A perfect so, segue. <laughs> I was thinking like how we can bring up DA, but for those who don't know and are kind of a little bit uninitiated, this game has a uh, dynamic difficulty. And so there are uh, nine different ranks. Uh, one through three are for the assisted, assisted run. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. One through three are through the assisted run and then four through nine are standard, and then hardcore is locked to eight and nine. The DA affects how much damage enemies do to you, and, uh, blanking now. Oh, and enemy AI patterns. So like, zombies be also, more Also, how much like... damage they take, by the way. Sorry, just want to mention that. Oh, uh, oh yeah, that's right. So that makes right. it so DA is also relevant for the sake of DA routing. It's really good to have low DA for bosses to make them easier. So if you actually take a lot of damage during your runs, 
It'd actually be easier be to do the bosses because your difficulty will be lower, so it'll do more damage. Yeah, so basically, like, the better you're doing at the game, the harder it's going to make itself. And the lower, and the worse you're doing, it's going to make it easier. I think a death is minus 1,000 uh, DA, which will take you down one entire rank. That was a bit close. Scooby-Doo wants some Scooby snacks, it looked like, but he ain't getting any of those right now. <laughs> Yeah, the dogs in this game, I think, are probably one of the most, like, at least when I was running the game, they felt the most random, in my opinion. They are like, the ones that you could not... Like, when I ran Claire, I was like, dogs, man, they're fun. Uh, oh, they're they're easy, dude, you know? Like... Good catch. <laughs> I, ran too, I ran too comfortable. I was about to slip right there. You know? Um, uh, I just completely forgot what I was saying. Dogs are easy in Claire A, but that move right there you did, like, I I am so impressed every time I see it because, for me, the move there is to throw a flat. Watch that mouth. <laughs> Dude. Man, so wait, what were we talking about before? I got so sidetracked after you called my catch. The, the move that's oh. uh, when you put the fuse in, you mm -hmm. just like dance around the zombies. Because oh, yeah. like for me, that's where you put a So there's there's three different RNGs you can get there. Um, I think like the first zombie is free, which is why we did this particular camera in the movement there is to get the first zombie to do exactly what you want him to. So that was all like intentional. Um, but yeah, before, I think I just remember what I was going to say. Like, I thought the dogs were not as hard because in Claire, the only time you experience dogs, they never hit you. But in Leon, you experience pretty much four sections where dogs can hit you. And there's really no consistent line except for one area where they to have them not hit you. Whereas Lickers, you can manip them with looking and stuff like that. So it's not like the biggest deal. But they are kind of annoying. Squeeze in to get the club key, man. There is a there's such a thing called um like you can the best movement you can do there is getting back through the door you came in, which is a very tight movement thing. But I've messed it up unfortunately. But it looks really cool when you do it because it's kind so, of tight. So kind of like uh, when you pick up the oh god what the. The crank or the the lever for the library for Claire. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, in that the art key. So what I was supposed to do there was you aim and it manips him to do a very long punch. But unfortunately, I am not good at the game and messed it up. <laughs> so. Mm, yeah. Mata. But um, I did a quick turn dodge there, and it works just as well, but it's not as fast. And it's also a bit reaction-based. It's kind of monka. I so how, can, how consistent would you say RPD2 is? Um, depends what you mean by consistent. Do um, runs die? Yes, they do because, so for example, this liquor here can despawn, and he just did. That's why I shot him to despawn him so he doesn't come back. And here, Mr. Rex is pretty much. RPD is his uh, kingdom, and he doesn't want you there. So some, sometimes he'll just be in random parts of his castle, you know what I mean? Like, he'll just be wherever he wants to be. And sometimes that can be trying to just wreck you real hard. Right now, it seems like I got like decent RNG, so it's not like too bad. But what he can do, it actually isn't now he's a problem, he's a problem uh, later. So after I go through the, once I move these shelves over here, um, like, when I come back in this area, he's a problem. Like, he's already in the room. So if I was a bit slower here, he would have actually punched me, but it usually doesn't really happen. So then, out of curiosity, um... The early push that you did in RPD-1, does that make this library more con Uh, it... There's this philosophy where, um, in Leon people... There's some people that think you don't have to early push, but with Claire, I think it's... 
agreed upon that you have to early push because the zombies will try to grab you. Also, I did a shot manip as well, where I fired a bullet so that the zombies could hear me. So that if a zombie's in a certain position in the library, they will look towards the wall and not aggro to me, and it makes pushing the shelves a lot easier. What we used to do is just throw a safety flash, but we ended up cutting that out of the route. And it just saves time, and also you don't have to raise your DA for a little bit with the flash, and it just makes the menu a bit nicer, so... Yeah. That's, it's, a, it's a combination of the shot and the early push that makes the zombies not really grab you there. Otherwise, they probably will grab you. Yeah, I'd always enjoyed um, getting the RNG where I didn't have to throw the flash at all, because that just meant I didn't have to pick one up later. You got a bit of a meme RNG, but I guess he's just doing whatever he wants. <laughs> Easy. I mean, he's Some... not tossing you down like a rag doll, so that's nice. Yeah, the thing is, is if you actually get him to be too far in the hallway up there, it's actually better than him, because he can sometimes come through the door and you have to wait to dodge him. Because you can't dodge him as he comes immediately through a door. Pretty much, we won't see Mr. X again until pretty much the end of the game. Which is, I guess oh, is nice. Sad. Oh, my stars and stars, dude. Well, I guess he wanted a bit of a bite there. That was pretty nice. I thought I had the YOLO RNG. I did not, apparently. So. He just wanted to help you lower that DA a little bit. Yeah, just put me in the caution run cycle. Not a big deal. Just waste three seconds. Whatever. Uh, I know about the caution meme on Claire. Leon does not suffer uh, caution run. Yeah, he he can run in caution because it's the same speed, but stairs are, I think most people agree, are slower. No one's really tested, but I think most people agree. People that run the game agree that it's probably slower with Leon to stair skate on caution. So these dogs are completely random, so if we get a bite list, this is perfect. Nice, nice. But I mean, I won't say this was a perfect ideal speedrun section, because I got grabbed before, but... There's a fast we can grab here, and it just makes it a bit nicer. It's not that far out of the way. Yeah, yeah. it's just inside Ben's cage, yeah? Yeah. So Dagger, um, I think we forgot to mention the medallions in RPD are always random, but the solution's always the same. Yeah. Like, these puzzles are like... always the same, for example. Like... Yeah, it's just straight memorization. It's not like OG RE3 where you, you have to brute force solutions until you get... Mm -hmm. This is a nice little flash show. This is the only... Oh my god. There we got it. <laughs> Uh, Leon, watch your mouth. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that exit when I was playing casually was absolute crap. Yeah, so what we do, if you're wondering why we're supposed to, why we're trying to shoot the first zombie, if you don't, Mr. X will not get flashed. And it's really bad if he tries to hit you after that. And there's another way to go as well. You can just like pop open a different route to go and go yeah. around all the zombies. Also, Trader is kind of right. This is like a very good time to read don <laughs> donations because this is pretty much the auto scroller of the run. Just, that's pretty true. Because pretty much we, what we do here is we just walk to this door, get a couple items, walk to the sewers, do the croc. And it's pretty much just a lot of sitting and waiting until Ada section, pretty much. Just wait for her to come here, and that's pretty much it. Well, uh, we can read donations if we have. Yeah, it's a perfect time, actually. This is like the most downtime part of the run. What a mess. Well, I got the, uh, I got the page up, so, uh, I think, I don't know if this was actually said earlier, but one from JWR Harding. Saying thank you all for twenty dollars and JWR Harding. Thank you all for the support. Like Cards Engine asked, I will donate instead of buying him Harvester. So how much is again? Two eeny dollars. It turns people into indestructible monsters. That explains the horrible things I've seen. Yeah, and this is also a part where we're graced with the amazingly boring dialogue. <laughs> like, dude. You mean great dialogue? 
Uh, this dialogue. I'm gonna be honest, guys. Leon's just a complete papega here. He just. He's just not a. He doesn't. He didn't get the brains in his family. Someone else probably got them. Like, he just doesn't know what is going on. Come on. All right. Sewers are run by the city. Well, so Mondo, earlier you said you've been running this game pretty much since the start. Mm -hmm. So you've seen like many iterations of this speed run. Besides the knife and the 120 FPS cap, what would you say was probably like one of the bigger game changers to RE2 speedrunning? Well, I think this was in like the first three months. Um, Again? This doesn't really apply to Leon, but it applies to Claire, and this is the thing I thought about uh, first when you asked this question. Um, this, people did not take the spark shot seriously. If you use the spark shot in a casual playthrough, you're like, man, I can never break a needle on anything. It takes too long. But it's useful on pretty much the sec. It can be useful in the second boss, but it's primarily useful in the third boss. And people didn't really know it for months because people just had the set belief that it was a terrible item. I thought that was pretty significant. Yeah. Also, just like the... Have... Oh, sorry. No problem. Uh, do we... I was just wondering if we had time for a couple donations. Yes, this is perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, Sikri donated $50, and she says, I don't want my gang to moan. Let's prove we are not dead inside like those zombies towards what's happening right now in the world. May the hub be with you all. Thank you, Sigri. And uh, JWR Harding, who just ran a Resident Evil remaster, uh, donated twenty dollars, and he says, "Thank you all for the support." Like Carcinogen asked, "I will donate instead of buying him Harvester." So, how much is it again? Twenty dollars. You said the virus turned people. Thank y'all so much for the donation. We're almost at twenty-five hundred. Let's do it. Oh yeah, man! Hype. Let's go. Hog champ. And uh, Mondo, if you wanted to know my answer to the to it, uh, this oh, sorry, is something I that's forgot to ask. Kind of, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's it's fairly trivial, but um, I think one of the things that really started to push RE2 2019 in the direction that it's gone was d the discovery that if you skip shotgun and grenade launcher in RPD, they pop up in the lab. Because at that point in time, RPD 2 or 1 became so much more consistent mm -hmm. and the knife strats started to become much more prevalent with G2 mm -hmm. and then the revolving around uh, G3 as well. Claire, not so much anymore because he just skipped GL entirely. But for, Le for Leon, I'd say that discovery was pretty instrumental. Which that actually was, I think, a better answer than what I thought of. Because literally, it, I was running back when, like, people, like, there was, it was actually called GL Skip. And if you told people, hey, are you doing GL Skip now? People would be kind of like, what? You know, like, 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 we just don't get the GL anymore with Claire. And yeah. yeah, with Leon getting it later in the game when you actually need it on the third boss. But it's funny because people have found, like, 7 Ray D, for example, he got the former world record in this category, not even using the shotgun and just the pistol and the knife and some grenades, which is just pretty crazy in my opinion. There's a line you can do here, but because I am not very good at it, <laughs> I'm not going to go for it, but you can walk past that zombie and um, not get bit by him, but if you mess up the movement too much, you will get bit, and I just don't want to go for it because... I'm used to doing that line anyway, so... Uh, of which of the sections, like, the filler sections, do you prefer, Ada or... That's a very hard question, because I don't think I like either of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like either of them gameplay-wise, because... Cherry is lit literally moves like she's a... like... Like a 1950s war tank or something. She just doesn't have very good mobility at all. Like, she just... She has to turn with a lot of thought put into it, you know? Like, a lot of energy and thought has to be put into when Sherry wants to move in a certain direction. So for that reason, honestly, I think Ada's a bit better because... 
You just sit and crouch and hide from a creepy old man and, you know, it's not very interesting. And yeah, she... that first 180 turn was always pretty bad for me. It just, she just goes on, veers off in some random direction, trying to grab that teddy And by teddy bear, I mean horrible and ugly deformed doll, whatever. Actually, I don't think it's a teddy bear. It's like some potato head looking thing. I guess we'll see in like Chad's room what it's... I don't know what they were <laughs> thinking with that. I, it looks really ugly. <laughs> it's a really gross toy. Also, you know, this uh, secret weapon time of yours... It looks like it's going a little bit faster. Are you like... Oh just yeah, you're right. So, you can scan items in this game faster if you spam action as opposed to um, just holding it. So if you hear me clicking up a storm like I'm playing cookie clicker, that's why, because I'm just spamming it. You don't actually... There's actually probably an optimal rhythm to do it, but as long as you just tap like twice a second, it's probably good enough. Honestly, you tap four times a second. But yeah, you actually scan much faster, and that's something very, very subtle, so I'm glad you mentioned that. I forgot to bring that up. But it does save a decent amount of time, especially in the furnace section, where all you're doing is doing that, pretty much. And we're back to the King Dingus. So oh, that's great. Back to this guy. I always found it funny how uh, the, the theme of this game you know saw date i can't i don't know if that's actually how you pronounce it but like you know the main thing was there's two sides to every story and like leon's story kind of feels like a bad b movie where he's saying like a bunch of like crazy things like so that's why i've seen all these horrible things and just he's basically like a giant meme whereas with claire she's more of like a apps actual badass and takes things more seriously and she saves a girl's life what does leon do gets gets scammed by some woman <laughs> i don't know some lady he doesn't know you know like, i know he gets like galaxy brained by ada yeah he doesn't by the way speaking of claire uh do you guys have like 30 seconds i got a quick announcement to make sure sure well so coming up next as you know we have uh the claire run that's going to be coming up and uh the runner just asked us if it was possible to add an, a last minute incentive so chad thorson gave us five options for costume selection and uh, the bid war is actually on when you donate on Tiltify. There's a, it's in the polls option. So when you do your donation, you select which option you'd like. Right now, the five costumes that are available are the normal one, the just regular Claire outfit, Elsa Walker, which was the original protagonist of the Resident Evil 2 prototype that never came to be, uh, either military outfit, the noir style, or Claire 98. So. The noir style is um, more like, you know, kind of old time black and white detective movie style. So, I mean, it, you can, it, it, it's a bid war. So bid on all the costumes and whichever gets the most, uh, the most, uh, the, the, mo the most money, obviously, before, well, at the point where we're going to start the run. So we're going to look at what's ahead and that's what we're going to pick when Chad's ready to actually call timer on his Resident Evil 2 player run. So... Donate generously and uh, keep it up. Absolutely. We have a great cause too, guys, so please help us out. And if the 98 Claire doesn't win, you're wrong. Well, no, Dagger, you're wrong. Elza Walker should win, honestly. Uh, take my word for it, guys. I've ran Claire for 600 hours. Pick that one, <laughs> on my opinion. The subtle flex. Subtle flex, dude. Oh, I want a Steam screenshot. Screw a screenshot? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I have yeah. the Steam uh, overlay disabled. <laughs> you guys really want to see my hours, I can, but... I think it's about 1300 or something now, or 1200, I don't know. You just, like, went right past that dude on the stairs. I would have been... Super. That guy's taking a little morning nap. Just unfortunately, <laughs> it's in our way. We're going back for the rook plug. Yep. yep. So, for those that don't know, you have to get three plugs and put them in at the right order to get to to save Ada. Um, because apparently she's just trapped in a dumpster. I don't really know how. 
that happens, getting trapped in a dumpster or trash disposal area, I don't really know how, but you know. You have to save her because, you know, she, I guess she, I guess she's just Ada, I don't really know what Leon's intentions are, but you know. Yeah, so we just got the first plug and the next area we get the last two. These guys are completely random. So I got very, I did the right movement and I got kind of lucky, so that was nice. So I heard earlier in the, uh, in the marathon that runners like to name their zombies. What mm. is the name of that pair? Personally, I call them Goof Troop because they just seem like kind of a goofy pair of fellas, you know? They're just doing their own thing, just kind of, just kind of clowning around, you know? But I don't know if there's really a community agreed upon name for them. I call them, yeah, and also they're kind of, some people call them Pool Party. I don't really know. I think it goes either way. This is getting worse. Mango's this... trying to talk back, but <laughs> 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 whatever, dude. Uh, this uh, this section right here was always the bane of my existence for all of my run. And that shot I did on the second Geodult, if you want to try that on console or too low of a frame rate, you will not get that shot. And that sounds like it makes no sense, but for some reason, the shot works on higher frame rates, but it doesn't work on console. So, yeah, you can actually shoot that guy, I think, on console. Uh, on console, actually, well, V-Sync's always on by default in console, so the frame rate's locked. Mm -hmm, That's yeah, probably why. Exactly. And also, the settings are, are uh, fixed as well, so the performance you'll be getting will always be kind of like, probably not like max or whatever. Like, like I think most base consoles don't really get 60, but if you get Xbox One X or PS4 Pro, I think they can get a bit better stuff and that it unfortunately that's kind of how the game is different between things it's like for example if you want to run this game and also like record video you kind of do need a decent pc for good frame rate i mean really only frame rate kind of matters at bosses but it is kind of something to consider like it does kind of affect the run just slightly kind of bait this guy to grab me and the bid war has started with Shokushu donating two dollars and 22 cents and says Gimme noir, please. This guy now, is doing this, sorry. What a memer. Now, if we get noir, I really hope he puts that noir filter. Dagger, do you want noir or do you want the, the classic costume, sir? You're, you're just confusing me right now. I, I exist to confuse you, Mondo, so that's just... Oh cool. my sweet goodness. Well, that... I went down a bit too early, so now I'm gonna get poisoned. This is Yikes. really bad. Um, unfortunately, I did get go down too early, which is... Doesn't really happen. Like, that was just such a bad mistake by me, but it's not terrible. Man, these geo adults really had my number. It's whatever. If this were a PB, I probably would have reset, because those that don't know, Poison does this. And you don't want just some guy coughing and complaining for like two minutes, like, during a speed run, you know? Like, you can't, like, look, look at this. Well, that's a great mechanic. <laughs> Capcom, don't make Poison like this again. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it could just be like a uh, caution run as well. I can't remember what was the parasite thing like in uh, the RE3 remake. I mean, yeah, I know no you like take the effect. green herb and you. There's no that one was like different. Like I don't think they even had a poison mechanic, but that was pretty much the closest to I think a poison status was. You had bugs that would eventually just lower your health. Okay. There. And I think eventually you die if you can get rid of them. Yeah, that's why I got the. I'm gonna combine them here. <laughs> combine them the trip here. So okay, so this is the part I was practicing the most before this run because if I die here, I have to reload a uh, safety save. But this is a boss you can die to if you mess it up. Yeah, so we're probably gonna go for like some 
serious time here because yeah, this is the hardest this class, is... probably. But real quick, what he's gonna do is he's gonna take a grenade and toss it down to do about five percent damage, and it will trigger him to immediately come down. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you're playing this casually, you might have had to shoot him from the ceiling. It's kind of like in the OG RE2 where he bursts his hand through the ceiling in the train car before labs, but here he only does it if he hasn't taken enough damage, but the grenade has very generous AoE, so we just throw it and he jumps down immediately and we don't have to wait for him to start the fight immediately. So I got the RNG I kind of wanted to get. That was a fast stagger. I got it. Got it. Nice. That's probably the hardest part of the run right there, and I got it easy. Made it look really nice. easy. Nice. <laughs> Good job. Oh, nice, God. dude. Like, I remember still like having to go through two cycle with, you know, flashing him twice, and using spark shot on Claire. Like, being able to do it knife only is just sheer insanity. Honestly, Trader, I do agree. I feel like once your G2 is consistent enough, it's not the hardest part, but I feel like in a marathon setting, it has that unpredictable, like, kind of like... Sometimes G2 just does a random thing. But G3 is a purely reactive fight, though. Because ideally you want none of the eyes to break a G3. Because we use nades, the shotgun, and um, the knife there. Obviously we use the knife there. Um, oops, okay, so you can actually pass her here, but, you know, I'm bad, so I didn't, <laughs> I didn't pass her. It's fine, you're just but... giving us more run for people to donate towards that lovely bid. This is the labs. I would say most of the time when you come here on a PB pace, unless if a disaster strikes your run, it's probably going to PB because most of the RNG in the game is late game. I mean, early. that's not right. Most of the <laughs> RNG is in the early game and is very reset heavy, whereas here um, there is significant RNG, especially with Ivies because they are a one hit kill enemy. Even if you have the red, green, blue herb buff on you, at full health, you will still die to the Ivy grabs. This is something I found out in my casual playthrough. And I was like, what? Like, I didn't know they had an insta-kill until, like, my second playthrough, because I never got grabbed by them, I think. Or, ne I, or I just always had a, um, sub-weapon. But yeah, they will kill you at full health, doesn't matter. So yeah, the, they're the m most, uh, kind of scary part. Like, the G-Adults are kind of, like, less difficult. They just have a very long grab, uh, range. Like, it's, it's crazy. Like, I don't know if you guys, like, play Super Smash Bros. Melee, but it's kind of like Marth's grab range, where it's just impossibly long. But, yeah. I'd say, uh, casually speaking, um, IVs are definitely not much of a threat at all. Whereas, like, G-Adults can be quite a pain, because if you try to, like, because there were times when I was playing casually where I just kept getting caught in a grab cycle where I kept wasting grenade after grenade after grenade because they kept grabbing yeah and they can re-grab you too it's that's why if you get grabbed by one your your runs probably over like this is a mar like this is a marathon setting run so obviously I can't just be like well reset you know <laughs> whatever we'll start again but you know like it is called no reset yeah it's kind of literally against the rules and also, of course, uh, it's a 100% chance of poison, unlike earlier when I believe it was Carsey who got hit by one of the snakes and did get... There's a 100% chance, but you can block the poison effect in this game if you use red and blue herbs, which is something not useful to the speedrun, but is something good to note for casual playthrough. 
You can use yeah. a blue herb to get rid of it, but if you have a red and blue herb and use the buff, you will just have this temporary protection from the poison effect. Yeah, it also reduces incoming damage, yeah. which I do remember it being used in the hardcore run, mm. like in the B scenario at one point. I don't know if it's in vogue. Oh man, hardcore now is just standard, but with more risk because with Claire, if you get grabbed on the stairs at full caution, you can still die in one hit. So, like, I don't think people grab many items and even hardcore now like unfortunately because it does make the run a bit easier but yeah when you're desperate for time save you can't pick up those items once again this puzzle is almost always this is, is always the same it's yeah it's what are you gonna say well, also, I thought to mention this, because in my casual playthrough, you have to find the two codes, and then you go back to the room you came from. But when if you memorize the two codes, you don't have to uh, find the codes, because you already know them, and you can just... I would argue it skips about probably half of labs. Like, from a casual playthrough perspective, it skips about half of labs, because you're... You don't have to grab the helix trophy and you don't have to look at the hatch and the codes are always the same so that's that's nice otherwise this run would be very rmg and of course the b or second scenario runs they are different but it's like the a scenario runs where they're the same every time do we have time for a quick donation absolutely sure. We got a $2 donation from Foxy Lovelace who says, Military skin for Claire A. But uh, isn't that Claire B though? Or am I confused? Oh no, it's Claire A. My bad. They're both Claire A. <laughs> you have impeccable taste because I actually uh, use the military skin the most whenever I was doing. So this is kind of serious time for like a little bit because I need to hear an audio cue and then that's about right. it. So that's it. You can. It's no big deal now. Okay, so that second liquor didn't cooperate, but it's not a huge deal. Sorry about that. Yeah, the the audio cue there. You want to hear both of them attack so that you can um, um make sure that you can flash them properly. Otherwise, they will just completely wreck you. I got kind of wacky with the second liquor. Welcome back. Yeah, the uh, when a liquor is flashbanged and they're on the ceiling, they go through that long like animation where they're mm -hmm. on their back, just kind of flailing about. Whereas if they're on the ground, they actually recover a little bit. They recover, I would argue, like at half speed. Like it's, I mean, like it's much faster if they're flashed on the ground because they swipe around. But otherwise, if they're on the ceiling, they fall over. Yeah, for a very long time. Unfortunately, luckily we did not really get hit by them. And out here is pretty much YOLO and just hoping you get good luck. So far this looks okay. Oh my god, that is terrible luck. <laughs> wow, and that did about two-thirds of my health bar, which is... Wow. <laughs> well, that's pretty nice. These The liquors are not balanced in this game, honestly, because they pretty much act like seeing enemies. They just pretend like they can't see. Because once you aggro them, they cannot be unaggroed, and they know exactly where you are, even if you're standing still. So, I just honestly think they cheat. Like, they just... Like, you can't really... I wouldn't say you can't juke lickers, but it's very hard, and they're very fast, and they're very aggressive enemy type, so... This is the second... This is, like, one of the... Last times we see Mr. X in the whole run, and we kind of just waltz right past him like he does, wasn't even there to begin with. <laughs> Would you say that Mr. X is probably a much better implementation of the like a nemesis than RE3 Nemesis remake? Um, 
funny you would ask that because that's exactly what I said when we were talking about it on a couple of runs back. <laughs> I honestly think um, I would have liked a dynamic nemesis in RE3. That'd be kind of like more like unpredictable because he is kind of fixed to show up at certain parts. I feel like honestly it's kind of the same, but Nemi is just more aggressive. Like, I feel like oh, Nemesis is actually a little bit more restricted because really? like there you can't he can't go in a good bit of the areas in the downtown area of RE3 either. Well, here's the thing, Mr. X at some point like he'll follow you on a long enough period that he feels more dynamic because let's say you step in a save room or you go out of sight, and he'll start roaming and it's hard to tell exactly where he is whereas Nemesis it's really scripted events. He's going to show up and he's just gonna come at you no matter what. Like, there's no tension because you know he's there from that point onwards. With Mr. X, he's more insidious. He's more, mm -hmm. you know, kind of creeping, really. Mm -hmm. and he also doesn't have that annoying, like, tentacle, like, legs. Yeah. <laughs> also, I would honestly, yeah, I would agree that Mr. X is more dynamic because even in the speedrun, he can be in a random spot and you just don't know where he is. Like, or some... Well, technically, there's two mixed Mr. X's uh, spawned at any point, All right. and that's how he kind of... He doesn't teleport, because there's two of them, and if you go too far, then it's the other one. Like, uh, hmm. Boundary Break actually showed a video where it's possible to have two Mr. X's on you at the same time if you kite the first one all the way to the second one, which is terrifying. But, uh... <laughs> yep. I love the G fights though in the remake. I love them. I was saying, I don't know if Mondo is wanting serious time. Nah, man, nah, it's pretty much the serious time was at the nades. It was fun. I lower the image quality here for better frame rate, for better knife stuff, because he does when he gets up here, he does a smoke attack, which really like tanks FPS by like 30, and that's a lot of our damage lost. So, Mondo, you're sitting here and you're swapping knives and you're just keeping swiping. What's going on? Um, so that's a technique known as knife swapping. It's kind of funny because it's like, oh, you're swapping the knives. What's it called? Knife swap? <laughs> you know, like, literally it's called what it is. But um, what you do is if you switch to a knife and you switch your weapon mid-switch, then... All of a sudden, you switch to the other knife seamlessly as if, like, you'd never had, like, a second knife. Like, because what usually happens is if you simply just go on your menu and switch knives, you'll have to do an unsheath and then resheath animation, where you have to take the knife out and bring it... Like, you put the knife away and then you take out the new knife, which is... I mean, that makes sense from a programming perspective, right? But for some reason, if you, swi if you switch the knife and then you switch your weapon, you can switch the knives without that little animation and it saves a decent amount of time and also allows you to do more optimal dps which is very convenient but yeah i feel like that when i believe it was kenhi who discovered that and i remember when it was pulled out then the G3 fight just became so much faster because mm -hmm. and more consistent because you were as you said you're able to front load that DPS and you had to you skip that really lengthy animation of taking out another knife and using that. Do we have time for a couple of donations? Sure. All right, so we got a ten dollar donation by Alexanderson who says, "Show me the polygons." And then another $9 anonymous donation who says, Give me that military Claire. P.S. Has the Claire Runner learned how to read yet? Kappa. Oh man, that shade at Chad. You can do a shot manip to manip both of them. I manip the first guy to face the wall there, but the second guy I haven't really learned that. So I didn't do it there, unfortunately, but it would have been pretty cool to show off. But yeah. And this is where we're going to get the uh, aim dodge here. See, that's what I was trying to do with the helicopter crash. If you aim at him from a certain distance, he will always go for that sweeping punch. And it's so slow, you can just pass him on the side. That's a pretty nice trick. I'm taking notes for my next time I play Project Resistant. 
Although I just want to point out that uh, Noir Claire is lagging behind at 222, then Claire 98 at $10, and Military ahead by just $1. Still nothing for Elsa Walker or normal Claire. Aw, oh, come on, Military. And where we got like less than, what, three minutes at this point? It's pretty oh, much yeah. this is the last minute of the run, pretty much. So vote for the costumes you want, and on top of that, get us past that 2.5k mark before the end of the run. I believe in you. Also, this is a joke final boss fight, so if you really want to do more donations, go for it. Like, oh my god, that was really be interesting. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Just... Please hit the daughter rock, sir, please. Oh yeah. my goodness. See, seeing how this uh, fight has gone now, oh, oh that damn. I'm really Ow. scared now. Hit the other rock. Thank you. That was but, pretty uh, bad, but whatever. Yeah, doing this casually, I could not figure out how to, like, stagger him with the... when he does the charge, and so I kept dying instantly. And seeing how much of a meme this fight has become by you just literally standing to his left and him just, like, flailing wildly is just insane to me. It's funny enough, I think this is only, like, uh, less than, like, 40 seconds off PB, which is not, actually not that bad of a run. I think it's, like, top 20 or something? I'm not quite sure. Find that's really, really, really good. Yeah, that's fantastic. Especially at getting grabbed and poisoned and having to cough up a lung. Yeah, the run's it's over now. <laughs> what is time it's now? Time, or? Yeah, times. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Forgot. GG. Absolutely. Final this game is time awesome. is fifty three thirty eight. My PB is a fifty two fifty six. So it's not Dang. too bad actually, For, especially really with the good. poison. Yeah. Yeah, man. See, congratulations. I knew you'd do well. You did amazingly well. So, All right. Well, thank you, Mondo Mantra, mm -hmm. for <laughs> honestly, this is one of my favorite Resident Evil games. Like I said, two and Code Veronica are tied for me, and uh, it's always a pleasure to see people looking for the G virus, and uh, you know, blowing a tire into bits is always satisfying. But uh, and Dagger, thank you for co-commenting this run with me. I've been more. Uh, I've been behind the scenes for the most part. Oh my God, we just got. Okay, something just happened. Um, <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute, but honestly, thank you for being here, and uh, it's always a pleasure. I can't wait to get back to the States and see you again, and uh, we don't know when, we don't know how exactly, but we're going to work tirelessly until we make it happen. And uh, thank you so much, guys, for contributing to this amazing event. It's been a, a huge success so far, and it's all thanks to you, each and every single one of you, watching, running, volunteering. W without you, there's no us, so thank you so much. Oh no, thank you for having me. And absolutely, I'm not gonna lie, I have credit with Air Canada. I'll come up to y'all. <laughs> awesome. Well, there's definitely uh, things in the cards for Montreal. And it's it's a it's a great city to visit. And we have an amazing food scene. So, you know, I highly uh, recommend it. And Mondo, you are gonna say something? Well, I just wanted to say one thing. Um, I wouldn't have been in this marathon if Dagger didn't uh, suggest me to be in, and I'm glad he did because this was pretty fun. So thanks for having me, I guess. Thank you for the kind words, thanks and thank you, Dagger, Dagger, for getting people in here. Thank you so much, sir. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And uh, All right, so without further ado, we're going to go to a quick break, get ready for the second part of the Resident Evil 2 uh, saga, which is going to be Claire A, not Claire B. I'm sorry, Chad, if I almost gave you a heart attack with my Claire B mishap earlier and uh you can still donate towards your the costume of your choice so keep it coming thank you very much take care and best of luck to you chat